Hey there, guys. So, it's that time again. That sweet tooth craving that you just got to satisfy. So, anyways, um, I want you to come along with me while I improvise. Because I'm not going to the store. I'm going to just use what I got and make it work. Um, today I'm making, whoa, earthquake cake. actually try and make two of these cakes because I have enough supplies even though I don't have everything that it calls for I have enough substitution supplies as well so I'm gonna use two foil pans I'd say I don't know what 9 by 11 and I'm going to spray those with a non-stick cooking spray all right so once I get my pans coated I'm gonna take a bag of coconut sweetened and I'm gonna Dump it in the bottom. And since I have two bags, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. Now you just wanna spread that out evenly to coat the entire bottom of your pan. Spread it out. Once you get it all evenly spread it, Next, I'm gonna add some nuts. And I'm going to sprinkle with my pecans. Oops, I'm trying to do this one-handed, guys, sorry. Pecans, pecans, spread them out. Make sure they're spread out evenly. And I happen to like a lot of nuts. So I do have a bag of, of uh, chopped walnuts already open. So I'm gonna add a few walnuts too. I like nuts in my cakes and whatever sweets I have. So we're gonna add a few walnuts as well. Alrighty, so now you have your nuts and your coconut on the bottom. Okay, next I'm going to sprinkle a few dark chocolate chips on both sides. I have in my pantry two boxes of German cake mix and one box of Jebel's food. So I'm gonna mix all three of those together. In my mixer. There's German chocolate. Another mix box of German chocolate. Now remember this is a double recipe. So if you're just making one pan, you don't need all of this. You could probably just get by with one box of cake mix. And you could use either the devil's food or the German chocolate. It wouldn't even matter. Okay, I'm gonna add to that some eggs and some oil. So my vegetable oil, it says one third cup per box. So I'm only gonna do two of the boxes. So I'm gonna do two third cups of vegetable oil. It asks for three eggs per box, but I'm only gonna do four eggs. And that's because I am using one can of applesauce. Now, if you don't have applesauce, 
To me, applesauce just makes the cake moister, but if you don't wanna do applesauce, you can just use the eggs and oil according to the box. All right, I'm going to just dump my applesauce in here. This bowl's kind of full. You guys know I like to push the limit on these bowls. All right, get rid of my garbage here. Okay. Let's see if it does. Like I was saying, I don't remember where I got this. I do remember that it was a Black Friday special. So it was like dirt cheap. But I like this spinning bowl. It really helps. Alrighty. So now my two pans. I'm going to go ahead and pour my cake batter. Over the top. fluffy with cake batter. I think it's the applesauce that makes it like that. And it just cuts down on some of the egg and oil if you use applesauce and it makes it so rich and moist. You should try it with your holiday baking. Okay, so once I get those in there, I'm gonna go ahead and spread it out to the corners. So the next step is my cream cheese. Now, most earthquake recipes, they will call for cream cheese and um, powdered sugar mixture. But I don't have powdered sugar, so guess what? This is where part of my substitution comes in. I am going to add a tub of cream cheese frosting. Normally you would mix cream cheese with butter and powdered sugar. What does that make? frosting. So I'm going to just skip the 
butter powdered sugar step and add a tub of cream cheese frosting instead. We're gonna see how this goes. All right, I'm gonna mix that together. this and I'm just going to do some dollops. These are some pretty big dollops, but dollops of the cream cheese. Now, if you've never made this cake, I'm telling you, you need to try it especially if you like coconut or pecans or German chocolate, because it's a variation of German chocolate. Let me see, put a little more on this one. I'm just putting it all in there any kind of way right now. All right, then I'm just gonna kind of swerve it a little bit. I'm making a big mess, but you get the idea. Swerve it in there. Now, if you want to be OCD, you can make little small drops and not swerve it, and it'll kind of sink down. But I'm just trying to get it all over. I like every slice to have a little bit. And when you do the drops and you don't swirl them, then it's hard to have some in every bite. So, here we go. Okay, this is deliciousness. Now, again, settle them. I'm getting it all over the edges here. I'm a messy baker. All right, one more step. Go ahead, I'm gonna sprinkle some more chocolate chips here. Because you can never have enough chocolate chips. I'm sorry, that's just a fact of life. In addition to what I also found in my pantry were some Giardelli's dark chocolate melting chips. So I am gonna add some of those because dark chocolate is my absolute favorite. So can't go wrong, like I said, with extra chocolate. in on the center rack 350 and they need to cook for about 45 to 55 minutes all right well they're out and the reason it's called earthquake cake is because of the craters that are created 
in the cake. And like an earthquake came along and created, what do you call those? Cracks. All right, so two cakes. Let them cool and they'll be ready to serve. I'm gonna serve it warm because it's ooey gooey, but right now it's piping hot. So I'm gonna let it cool room temperature or not quite room temperature. It would be delicious with ice cream, but uh, yeah, we might do ice cream too. All right, so I cut it and we're gonna scoop it out of here. And once I get it in the cup, it's a messy dessert. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chop it with some extra chocolate syrup here. Could never have enough chocolate syrup. And this is the good stuff. All right, so here we have it. My earthquake cake. Improvised. Enjoy.